Hi, almost everyone is watching my channel without a subscription. Please support me and subscribe. I release videos every day for you. Story 1. Goof announces her pregnancy and her older sister demands an abortion adoption. I, 28F, am currently 19 weeks pregnant. My partner, 29M, and I are very excited. As this is our first baby and we have been trying for a few months. We announced the pregnancy a month ago at a dinner party we hosted, and everyone seemed surprised and overjoyed. My sister, 35F, who I will call K, immediately burst into tears and asked me how I could do this to her. I stared at her and asked what. She started ranting, saying that I always got everything I wanted, which is not true. I worked hard for all that I have, and that she knew I got pregnant just so I could rub her infertility in her face. She screamed at me for five minutes about how I didn't deserve to be a mother, and she should be the one pregnant right now. My parents left with her soon after, and the party was basically over. I was really disturbed by my sister's reaction, because we had been pretty close before, and she'd never done anything like this. Kate called me the next day, apologizing for how she acted at my announcement, and asked if we could meet up for coffee. I accepted. We met up, and she pretended as nothing had happened. Then she started a big speech about her infertility, how heartbreaking it is to be growing life inside of her, just to lose it, and how she had always wanted children of her own. She then proceeded to ask me if I could consider getting an abortion, to make things fair or letting her adopt my baby. I stared at her and asked if she was serious. Kay said she was. I just dropped my part of the bill on the table and left. L, Kay's husband, texted me a rant that night about how I'd made Kay cry, and how all they wanted was to be parents, and that this meant so much to them, and I owed them for being more successful than them. I had my partner invested many years into our jobs, and we have worked very hard to earn what we earn now. I told them that my partner and I had been hoping for kids too and that I was not giving up my baby. He hung up. She later sent me a long letter, four pages, about how she had always wanted to be a mother, and could I consider either abortion or letting her adopt my baby, how I should care about my older sister's happiness, how she would make a better mom, how the oldest kid should have the first grandchild and how I could always just have another baby since it was so easy for me to conceive. After that, she quieted down some, and I thought we were done with this. Except, it wasn't. She had posted my S-O-N-O-G-R-A-M on her FB, and captioned it L and I are expecting. We can't wait to meet our little princess. I was seeing red. I texted her and demanded she takes the post down. No reply. I texted L, no reply. So I called my mother and told her what happened. She was able to make Kay take the post down, luckily enough. Kate has called me petty for calling my mom and has continued to demand I give up my baby. I sent her a letter explaining that I had had enough of her nonsense, I am keeping my baby, and that I recommend she get some help. I added that if she continues, I will not hesitate to call 999. This weekend, however, was the absolute last straw. My mom and dad had the spare key in my house, and while she was over at their house for brunch, she took the key. While my partner and I were at work, she broke into our house and stole all the clothing, blankets, nappies, bottles, and pretty much any other item we had bought for the baby, except furniture. It was later returned after my mom found it in her car. I called 999, but they told me I couldn't do anything because I had no proof and because it was all returned. My partner and I are moving in April, but I'm still scared my sister will find out where we live and take my child. I that she's upset and jealous, due to her infertility, but that shouldn't mean I have to give up my baby. My parents know about this, and they have been doing their best to get her some help. She doesn't want to adopt, because she wants a child that's her own flesh and blood. I'm two in August, and the stress she's causing cannot and will not be good for me or the baby. My partner is looking into a cease and desist letter. Is there anything else I should do or say? I'm scared for my baby. The support I've received from this website is overwhelming. Thank you all for your comments, although I couldn't reply to all of them. They are appreciated. We have had the locks changed, cameras installed, and a ring doorbell. I've started saving every letter and screenshotting every message my sister has sent and plan to take them to court for a restraining order very soon. We've also been seriously documenting everything. My husband and I are planning a trip to Ireland for our anniversary next week, and it's going to be good to clear our heads for my sister. I've called 999 to report her for harassment, and they gave her a warning. She's contacted me saying that if I won't give her my child, I can at least pay for multiple rounds of IVF, which I have not replied to other than refusing. She's been begging my parents to convince me to give up my baby, which they refuse to do. They have also been given a statement that basically says that if they give her my contact information, they will not see my baby, 
to which they have agreed. I've since changed my phone number, and we are moving very soon. My sister does not know our new address. She actually stood on our stoop for 20 minutes a few days ago, banging on our door and yelling. My husband opened a window and told her that if she didn't leave, he would let the dog out and threatened to call the police. We have a rather small but hyper puppy who jumps on everyone and barks a lot, and she is quite scared of dogs actually, so this made her leave. I started working from home last week as did my husband, and we followed the advice of one of the comments, washed all of the baby stuff, as well as made sure none of the food in our kitchen was messed with, none was, luckily. We're planning on getting a restraining order as soon as possible, and are looking forward to our trip. I'm already sick of being pregnant, and I'm not even in the third trimester, I just want my baby. Thank you all again for your wonderful advice baby is born. Story 2. He's the love of my life, but I 27F don't know if I can handle the demands of my chef boyfriend's 26M career. My boyfriend and I have been through some trying times over the past four years, and through it all we've been each other's support. We complement each other so well. Long story short, he's the love of my life. When we first met, he was unemployed after recently quitting his job as an EMT. He said he was unsatisfied because he didn't feel like it was for him and was searching for direction. He mentioned before that he's always had a passion for cooking so I urged him to follow his gut and do what would bring him happiness. I encouraged him to enroll in culinary school. Since then, he's moved up quickly, and after graduating in two years in the industry, he opened a hot new restaurant as sous chef. He's really come alive since switching industries. He's got this fiery energy, this sparkle in his eyes when talking about the action in the kitchen, new recipes he's come up with or dreams of opening his own restaurant. I'm extremely proud of his accomplishments and seeing this amazing passion he has for what he does makes me love him even more. He inspires me to follow my dreams. The thing yet is I had no idea how demanding his career would be. I've never worked in the restaurant industry, and I've never personally met another chef before I started dating one. He works crazy hours, 70, sometimes 80 hours a week. We don't live together, and I only see him for a few hours on the weekends when I can stay up late. Half that time we're asleep because it's 3 in the morning, I'm sleepy and he's exhausted. He's got one day off a week, if that, which is pretty much the only time he has to relax, catch up with family, friends, and me. I'm a 9-5-er and I'm asleep by the time he gets off work. I speak to him twice a day if I'm lucky, once in the morning, which is a rushed five-minute conversation since I'm at work, and once in the evening when he gets off work, which I hardly even remember because I'm asleep and only half-conscious. We can't text while he's working, which is all the time. He works every holiday. Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, Valentine's Day are all busy restaurant days. Birthdays and anniversaries are not guaranteed off either. Through it all, I've been super supportive. I've gotten kind of used to him not being around. I've taken up yoga and kickboxing, and I've started reading way more books and watching way more movies. I've even kind of gotten used to going to parties and events alone. Most days are okay. I keep myself so busy with friends and hobbies that I sometimes forget I miss him so much. But other days are horrible. Yesterday, he told me he made plans to see his friends in the evening when they got off work. After we hung up, I broke down in tears because I had been looking forward to seeing him all week. But I can't even be mad. It's his only free day, and it's not fair for me to take up all this time. We hardly ever have sex. There's just no time, no energy. When we do spend time together on those rare Mondays, we don't go out because he's so tired. I cherish these moments just cuddled up on the couch because they don't happen often. I don't speak to him about my feelings of loneliness because I don't want to burden him with my emotions on his sole day of relaxation, especially since that's just the nature of the industry and he can't do anything about it. This is the guy I want to grow old with and have babies with. He's the one with whom I want to share the future. But then I think about how I feel on days like today, and I wonder if his career will ever allow him to be present. Am I okay with eating every meal and spending every holiday alone? Can I take on the responsibilities of the household and raising children essentially like a single parent? Can I deal with him only being home long enough to sleep? We're planning on moving in together within the next six months. I'm not sure if this will help our relationship or just prolong the inevitable, maybe both. It's been tough and I know it will only get tougher. I love him so much but I don't know if I'm strong enough. I have to figure out what it is I need and I'm terrified at the thought that maybe he can't give it to me. Just thinking about leaving him over the career I pushed him toward makes me feel sick to my stomach. Tittle DR I pushed my boyfriend toward a career he loves but also leaves him exhausted and with no time to spend with me. I want to marry this guy but I don't know if I can handle the loneliness that comes with being with someone in such a demanding industry. Update 
Not sure how many people have seen my previous post, but I figured I'd cater to those who commented and seemed to genuinely care about our situation. We finally had our much-needed conversation last night. I felt horrible for bringing up such heavy topics right after he came home from work, stressed and exhausted, but it's the only time we ever have. I asked him the big questions. What's your five-year career plan? Can you realistically work in a kitchen for the rest of your life? Is that what you really want? And at the mention of working in a kitchen for the rest of his life, behind eyelids drooping with exhaustion and the dark bags under them, came the sparkle and fire that I adore and feared would appear during this conversation. I want to run my own kitchen. I want to own my own restaurant. I'm making a name for myself and people are noticing. I want this and I know I can do it. I asked him if he realized what that meant in terms of raising a family, which he always said he wanted. He said it would stay like this, 12 to 16 hour shifts every day, getting home after midnight. His head hung down and told me we could make it work. I can have breakfast with the family every morning and take the kids to school, he suggested. I told him I needed more from a partner. I want a normal life. I want to have dinner every night as a family. I want to redo our kids together at night. I want holidays and birthdays. He told me he can't give me any of that. I was hoping and praying the entire time that he would reformulate his career path. Maybe set his eyes on a comparable goal that would make a home life possible. But there's no comparison. After hours of talking, we realized this just wouldn't work. If we stayed together, either I would resent him for never being around, or he would resent me for making me give up his dream. I would never strip him of that. This is the most difficult thing I've ever had to do. I almost wish he was an abusive cheating asshole. It would make moving on way easier. But no, he's wonderful and has always been so good to me. We're very much in love and that's what makes this whole thing so horrible. I never envisioned a future without him, and he said he always thought he'd be sharing life's successes with me. I wish I could be the one standing next to him through it all, but I'm just not cut out for the life he's offering me. And although I am glad we figured out our incompatibilities before marriage and children, I'm devastated. TLB Dar, he's willing to work extremely demanding hours for the rest of his life to achieve success in his industry. I need a partner who will have an active role in raising a family. The career I pushed him toward turned out to be our demise. Edit thank you to everyone for the kind words and for sharing their own personal experiences with me. The more I read, the more I know this breakup had to happen in order for us both to be happy with our lives down the line. I really appreciate the support I receive here for little heartbroken me. I never anticipated that Reddit would help me heal. S Story 3 My 24M girlfriend 24F and my brother 26M got into a fistfight over a political argument and now my family is demanding I break up with her. I introduced my girlfriend to my parents, siblings and extended family on a family get together a few days ago. This was the first time I had seen them since the start of the pandemic and it started out really well with everyone getting along and having fun. That would change as more alcohol was consumed. My girlfriend and brother got into a heated political argument that suddenly escalated to violence resulting in substantial injuries for both of them. Accounts of who throw the first punch differ, and I frankly don't care, as they both actively contributed to the fight and antagonized each other. The fight was eventually broken up when my girlfriend had the clear advantage. My mom screamed at my girlfriend to leave so we left. I love both my girlfriend and my brother, and I don't blame either one of them for the fight more than I blame the other. My girlfriend also doesn't seem to hold any grudges and is embarrassed by her behavior during the incident. My brother and parents on the other hand place 100% of the blame on my girlfriend and demand that I break up with her or they will cut all ties with me. I will not do that but I want to maintain my relationship with my family and somehow get them to accept my girlfriend and that she should not bear all blame for this incident. My brother is also demanding that my girlfriend pay for his alleged medical expenses and is threatening to report her to the police if she refuse. My experience of growing up in this town makes me think sexism in the local police department makes it unlikely that anything would come of that report, as they would almost certainly refuse to consider the possibility that a woman can assault a man. I've offered to pay off my brother, but my girlfriend refuses to let me do that and says that she will pay him if he can prove that the medical expenses are real. My girlfriend still has clearly visible injuries but did not visit the hospital. I suggested that she go to get her injuries documented but she doesn't want to do that. I just wish everyone could forget about this and move forward but writing this makes me think my family is acing unreasonably and perhaps I should just cut contact with them as they are threatening to do with me. Perhaps growing up with these people makes me blind to how ridiculous their behavior is. I don't know what I should do. Thank you for all the advice and apologies for the vagueness of my original post. 
I showed it to my girlfriend, and she agreed that it was vague, and thought I left out important details. I will let her provide those details at the end. You convinced me that it may actually matter who throw the first punch. Before making the original post, I had heard two mutually exclusive versions of events. One told by my girlfriend and one told by my parents and my brother. It's honestly very hard for me to believe that any of them would lie about something like this. I have since reached out to everyone else, who may have seen how it started and received two relevant replies. One from my aunt, who confirmed my parents' and brother's version, and one from my youngest sister, 18F, who described a scenario similar to what my girlfriend had told me. Everyone who sided with my brother has obviously had the opportunity to talk with him and each other and intentionally or unintentionally influence each other's story. It's very unlikely that my girlfriend and sister had done that as they don't know each other and my sister would have no reason to lie for my girlfriend. I don't think there is a reasonable explanation for them telling the same story other than that it's the truth. I'm therefore almost certain that my brother hit my girlfriend first. My parents have recanted the threat to cut ties with me for not breaking up with my girlfriend, but they are still saying that she is not welcome back to their home and will never be part of our family. I'm honestly done with them at this point. She has done everything and more including being willing to pay for his medical expenses, and my brother refused to even hear her apology much less make his own or take any responsibility at all. At this point, I'm 100% behind my girlfriend, just as my parents are 100% behind my brother. Many people commenting on the original post asked if my brother is racist or assumed that he is after I revealed what the argument was about. I'm honestly not sure how to answer that. My brother sometimes repeats racist talking points from TV and social media, especially against Hispanic people, but last year he was strongly against the deportation of a neighboring family who had immigrated from Mexico. He even, probably facetiously, suggested that their deportation was a conspiracy to undermine Trump's immigration policy by deporting good people instead of violent criminals. I have never heard my brother use a racial slur or seen him treat anyone differently because of their race. I guess the answer depends on how you define racism. Do not forget to subscribe and leave comments. Videos are released every day.